the High Court commented on investigative processes, pointed out three aspects which it felt were deficient. I will deal with all three. First, that there was a gap between the police report being filed on the 30th of October 2016 and the police looking at the items on 3 December 2016. The scene should have been visited by the police close to the time of the police report. This was a lapse which affected some but not all of the items in the charges. In terms of the acquittal, the High Court also acquitted Ms. Liani in respect to the items not affected by the break in the chain. So the break in itself may not have affected the outcome given the High Court's reasoning. However, there can be no excuse for this lapse on the part of the police officer. It is a breach of a legal requirement. It is also a breach of police protocol, both of which require the police to respond to a crime scene promptly or as soon as practicable. The broader, broader objective of these requirements is to ensure the integrity of relevant evidence by securing it into police custody or otherwise obtaining a proper record uh, of it. Whether there has to be a seizure in any specific case must depend on the facts of the case, the nature of the exhibits, and evidence. However, even if there is no seizure, it is necessary to obtain a proper record of the evidence, such as by careful photography of the items. In this case, careful photography soon after the police report was filed may have been good enough, but that was not done. I said there can be no excuse I have nevertheless asked for an explanation as to why this has happened. I am told that the officer involved had a number of other ongoing cases, prosecutions, arrest operations, and a very uh, personal matter that he had to deal with. He seems to have been under a lot of pressure. He was in a predicament. It was a situation that many home team officers find themselves in. It's a reality of what our officers go through Nevertheless, internal investigations are being carried out in relation to the conduct of the officers involved in this case, and action will be taken as necessary. I must say, sir, I've noticed in various parts of the civil service, quite a lot of our officers are under work pressure. I've mentioned it at other points in this house. It's a general situation in some workplaces, many workplaces in Singapore with tight manpower issues, particularly several areas of the civil service. I have asked for a review of the workload of police investigation officers, though quite frankly, there is no easy solution because fundamentally it's a manpower issue. Technology has helped, will help, but that has limits. The police are also looking into online case management systems to prompt officers on next steps in investigative workflow and ensure accountability and minimize the risk of lapses in investigations. Next, I turn to photos. The second point that the High Court made about the police was a poor quality black and white photos were shown to Ms. Liani. Police agree that color photos would have been more effective. Color photos were shown to Ms. Liani in her final statement when a Bahasa Indonesia interpreter was also provided. Police will take on board the High Court's comments, which are fair. Police review has shown that the layout of the photographs was also not satisfactory. Some photos featured multiple items in a single photo with some overlapping and partially obscured. The third point the High Court made were the inaccuracies in recording the statements, the pace at which the questions were asked, and the time when one statement was taken, the and thirdly, the provision of a Bahasa Indonesia interpreter. I have dealt with the interpretation issue earlier. On this issue, I have said to police officers, we need to make sure accused persons understand the statement recording process, what it involves, what is required of them. I have asked the police to ask what language the person wishes to speak, but also explain which, which they do, but also explain briefly what the process entails and the purpose of the statement, and that the accused may ask for an interpreter at any time, and that this should be recorded as part of the statement. The High Court also pointed out that there were inaccuracies in the way questions were phrased and there were grammatical errors. Police have said to me, it is difficult to make sure there are no grammatical errors, but I think everybody agrees they need to try and make sure grammatical errors, if any, should not affect the interpretation and understanding of the statement itself. 
Police accept the point made about time when statements are taken. Sometimes the timing is inevitable because of the legal requirement to release a person under investigation within 48 hours. Police will have to make an assessment on whether the person is capable of understanding the questions at the time the statements are taken. As I've said, we'll, police will take on the comments uh, on board. The High Court also made observations about AGC on how the functionality of the DVD player was demonstrated in court. AGC has filed an affidavit explaining its position on record. The matter is now the subject of disciplinary proceedings, and thus I will refrain from commenting on this. I have been given a detailed note by AGC. I can set out the position, but I prefer not to. The disciplinary proceedings are by nature disciplinary. There are possible penal sanctions. There will be a full account of what the DPPs did at the DT. The key question before us is whether there was any improper influence on them. Uh, Minister Indrani has discussed this with Mr. Pratam Singh, leader of the opposition, who has also concerned that we should not go into this in parliament. Uh, let the DT handle it. The proceedings are penal in nature. I think lawyers will understand why we take this approach. AGC has also identified specific areas where it needs to improve. I will mention two areas. First, the valuation of items that are the subject of property offenses. In this case, the valuation of the items in the charges were derived from the Liu family's estimates. This has been the general practice hitherto to rely on the complainant's assessment of the value. There are currently no formal guidelines for prosecution on the issue of valuation. Prosecutors are expected to use their judgment and discretion. AGC is developing guidelines on this issue. Independent assessment of the value of the items may have helped in respect of some of the items in this case. Second, AGC is also looking at how it prepares for trials and will seek to learn from this and other cases. There is a further but general and important point. Prosecution's overarching role is to ensure that justice is done and not to win the case at all costs. The point is not being made by reference to this case. It is a general point. AGC has consistently emphasized this point to all its officers and will continue to do so. The Attorney General himself has also publicly stressed his chamber's commitment to the principle of even-handed justice in his speeches at the opening of the legal year and elsewhere. 